Reincarnation is another aspect of death, and a lot of people will tell you little tales about it. Reincarnation, coming back. A lot of folks are sure of it. They can come back. You come back as something, I don't know. Does it seem right to you that it would work? I mean, mathematically, it doesn't seem to work. Because originally on this earth, we only had, well, let's say six people. I know we had two, but it's a controversial number. Let's say at one time there were only, <laughs> there were only six of us, about. Six people, six souls. And those six people died, and those souls went back to the staging area. And new people were born, and those six souls came back. We still only have six souls. Now we have four billion people claiming to have souls. Where are all these extra souls coming from? Someone is printing up souls. <laughs> and it lowers their value. The more souls there are, the less they're worth. It would seem. Well, somebody's got to think of this shit, you know. <laughs> How about the perfect murder? I've thought sometimes about the perfect murder. You know what you do? You pick up one person by the ankles and you beat another person to death with him. <laughs> and they both die and there's no murder weapon. <laughs> what happened here, Sergeant? Looks like a pedestrian accident to me. <laughs> They must have been moving at quite a clip. <laughs> of course, if you should be caught with this perfect murder in progress or even after the fact, if you should be caught, you might wind up in death row. Death row. Wow. That's more than just fun, ain't it? I mean, this cat's there. Death row. Well, you got that one meal, but that's not much of a consolation, is it? You gotta get to order a meal. Big deal. Why don't you leave me alone? I'm not hungry, man. They give you that one last meal. I say you can have some fun with that last meal. I mean, if you work it right, they gotta give you whatever you want. I mean, short of elephant steak, you know? They don't want to start on a new elephant just for one guy. But they gotta give you pretty much what you want. That's part of the humanity of what they're going to do to you. Yeah, you could just order something, you know, like maybe, well, shit, you tell them you can't decide. <laughs> That's it. I can't decide. I don't know. I don't know if I want steak or lobster, you know? I, I mean, I really love them both, and I honestly can't decide. Could they kill you? I don't think they could kill you if you honestly couldn't decide. Lie detector, truth serum, the man honestly doesn't know what he wants. We can't very well kill him. We can't drag him down the last mile screaming, I don't know what I want. <laughs> You've got to give him a chance and then he, well, man lives. Imagine if you worked it out and you kept it going. Six months, man's still alive, can't decide on meal. Three years, eight years, and then finally you're an honest person. So you tell them when you do figure it out and you say, I've decided what I'd like. I think I'll have steak. Okay, how did you want that? <laughs> oh. Well, my feeling is if you're gonna die, you know, or if you know, hey, die big, die big. Nobody wants to just pass away. <laughs> you don't wanna be a euphemism, do you? Nobody wants to pass away. You know, Arnie passed away. Oh, really? Yeah. Well, I didn't know that. Well, that's the idea. <laughs> On the other hand, Dave died. Oh, yes, I heard about Dave dying. <laughs> that's true. I say die big. Give it a shot, man. Go out big. It's your chance. Die big. Work in a few posthumous reflexes for your friends. <laughs> Give them a show before you go. Entertain and uplift and instruct those you are leaving behind. 
When you die, give them a few posthumous reflexes. You know, the body does store electricity up. There's a certain storage of electricity, and even a dead body, a corpse, will occasionally go... <laughs> and I say, if you have that potential after you're dead, use it properly. Pre-program. Before you die, pre-program some posthumous reflexes that will be entertaining to those you've left behind. Do something to capture their imagination. Roll over on the autopsy table. That's nice. Cross your legs, scratch your balls, do something. Now, the only reason, the only reason that I even suggest that you have a choice about what you can do at the moment of death is a very little known and very little understood part of the death process called the two-minute warning. <laughs> Many people are not aware of it at all. The two-minute warning, just as in football. Two minutes before you die, you receive an audible warning. Two minutes, get your shit together. <laughs> the reason we don't know about it is because the only people who hear it die. <laughs> and I don't think we'd believe someone anyway if he told us he received his two-minute warning, would you? Some asshole on the bus? Hey, I just got my two-minute warning. <laughs> You'd think it was a coach out on the town. But no, the two-minute warning does arrive. And I say, use that time to entertain, to leave something behind. Do something with the two minutes. Hey, if nothing else, give a speech. A little two-minute speech. We can all give a little two-minute speech. Just pick some subject you're very fond of and talk about it for two minutes. I mean, tell them it's your last chance to tell them anything. So tell them, got two minutes, and I mean, wax eloquent, rise, bring it to the rafters, and then at the moment at the end, you say, if this is not the truth, may God strike me dead. <laughs>